My name is Shashi. Welcome to Tauke Talks, a series of sharing sessions where we invite local Taukes to share about their experiences in different topics surrounding entrepreneurship in Malaysia. So this sharing session is brought to you by RISE, a Malaysian research and social outreach project that empowers youth through entrepreneurship and employability programs. So RISE is supported by City Foundation. So this year, we aim to highlight stories of Taukes addressing different issues or topics in starting and sustaining their business. So we hope that these sharing sessions will encourage fellow budding entrepreneurs to continue persevering in their dreams of building their business in Malaysia. So I'm really happy and excited to welcome our guest of the day, uh, Mr. Edmund from Spoil Potato. So welcome to Talking Talks. Ah, 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 ah. We are honored to have you here today. Oh, hello, hello. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, hey we said hello already, so you know I won't, I won't do too many hellos. Uh, okay, so so the the first the first part of this is uh, is me just 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 uh, starting like yeah. Uh, yes, yes. So we'll just like uh, jump to the session. Maybe you can uh, introduce about yourself, uh, your background, and your business. Maybe. Okay. Um. I tell you what. Let me start with a question, and then I'll jump into this uh, yeah, uh, sure. intro. Um. Actually, when. When you see the word leaving a business behind, I mean, we, we're obviously not talking about, oh, yay, we exited the company, we sold it for a few million dollars, and we live happily ever after. That's not, uh, I think that's not what this title means, lah, right? This title means you're leaving the business because something bad has happened, uh, disaster, uh, failure, uh, and all that, you know, bad stuff right i mean that's that's what we're talking about right shashi you're not talking about make a million dollars and then oh happily ever after yeah. That, yeah. that's right. right so we're talking about failure right yes okay yeah. in and since we're talking about failure i have a question for everyone and everyone you know please chime in into your into your chat box uh, on zoom i want to hear what you what do you think about failure what does failure mean to you um in one sentence right what does failure mean to you so i'll give you i'll give you one minute and i'll let you write into the chat box uh and you know i'll see your replies and then we'll continue from there you know what does failure mean to you do, can, do we have music to play uh? i will Okay. Okay, Wei Chin, that's uh hmm. It's an interesting reply, Dunstan. Failure means an end to a chapter. And everybody can read everybody's chat, right? Uh Shashi? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Then I don't have to repeat what you write, lah. Okay. What about everyone else? I'd like to hear from you. Let's see who else is on the chat. Come on guys, come on. And how do you feel? Uh, what do you feel when it comes to failure? Oh. Okay. 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 Oof. Okay. 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 I think I've I've gotten enough answers. For those of you keeping your answers. Uh, uh, you can put it in there anytime later. I, actually, I just want to... Um, uh, th this brings me to my next question for you. What does a life without failure look like? That, I only really think about this. So, a life without failure, right? What does it actually look like? I want you to write your answers on the chat. Since, you know, I can't chat with you, I wish I could chat with you, but... We'll do it by chat. What does a life without failure mean? Oh. Okay. Okay, those are interesting replies. Okay, come on guys, what does no failure mean to in, in your life? <laughs> Will you be boring? <laughs> oh, Farah, that's very interesting. Or have you come to our, one of our previous sessions before? 
You seem very wise, Farah. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Now, so, so here's, here's the thing, right, guys? Here's what happens when someone doesn't live, doesn't fail. It actually means that they're not actually trying. <laughs> yes, okay. Okay, I don't know whether you've intended one of some of mine. Uh, okay, so the, because he, here's the thing, right, guys? If you are trying something new, if you're doing something new, I mean, you're going to suck at it, lah. Right? Whatever it is, lah. You know, you, uh, first time you're walking as a baby, you, you really suck at it, lah. You know, um, uh, first time you took a uh, additional math exam, you know, chances are you would have sucked and failed at it. Uh, first time you picked up a tennis racket or badminton racket, you know what? You suck at it, right? And you fail. So the 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 thing is with with failure, right? It failure and success really is this. It's not the opposites of each other. It really is the same side. It's sorry, it's just different sides of the same coin, or the same thing. <clears throat> so without failure, right? Without actually putting yourself in a position where you're going to fail, you're not going to succeed. And and I just want to, uh, <coughs> I just want to share with you a uh, very personal story, lah. And and I've, I've never actually shared this uh, really with anyone uh, before. So I grew up in a very uh, uh, strange family. Um, my dad, um, he has a very weird philosophy in life, lah. So my dad's very scared of a lot of things, right? Um, he's very old now. He's eighty six, and you know as he. As I knew him growing up, he was very scared of everything. <coughs> I remember he had an opportunity once to start a tuition center. He, so he was a teacher, and he was a public school teacher for many, many years. Like he started as a public school teacher. He retired as a public school teacher when he was, I think, almost 60. And so he had the opportunity to start a tuition center. And growing up, right, he would keep telling me the same story again and again. Now. And this was a story. You know, I had a chance to start a tuition center, but I don't want to take the risk, lah. You know, um, if I start a center, that means I have to pay for aircon. I'm like, it, it, I mean, in my small, you know, adolescent child like mine, I'm like, aircon only. What? What's so? You know, uh, I have to pay for aircon. Then uh, there's a risk; you might lose all your money. So I didn't do, lah. So I don't do. And so it's very strange, though. Growing up, right, he told that story again and again and again and again and again. Now. Basically, what he's saying that is be very afraid and that in life you shouldn't take uh, uh, risks. And so, you know, the story of my dad is, is very sad because that kind of life philosophy, right, means he never did anything else. Uh, he, he started as a teacher. He ended his career as a teacher. He has a very small tuition practice that he runs from home. You know, and because he 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 didn't do anything new, right? Didn't do anything different, and he was so afraid of of life, right? Um, it created a lot of money issues in my family. My mom, uh, uh, by and large, got depressed because of these kind of things. You know, so my dad's fear of failing. Oddly enough, it's probably, and again, can't confirm, right? Probably the cause of my mom's very severe depression. And my mom's depression was so severe, right, that um, she would, you know, go to hospital and, you know, there's this electroshock treatment where they will put electrodes in your, uh, on your brain, right, and they'll shock, you know, and she would go for such treatments a handful of times, la, I think uh, half a dozen times, uh, I think throughout her life. Um, it, so it was so bad, you know, and, and it was so bad that um, at, uh, she decided to try to commit suicide. So in, um, this was, I think, about 13, 14 years ago. She, she tried to commit suicide. She didn't succeed. We found her on time. They pumped her stomach. She had 40 antidepressant pills. A month later, she tried it again, this time 60 pills. This time we found her again, brought her to the hospital, pumped her stomach. She survived again, you know. But this time when she survived, she was mostly brain dead, right? The only part of her survived was the reptilian set of her brain. 
So she could barely breathe on her own. She couldn't eat on her own. She was fed through tubes. And so it, it was, it's a very, very sad story. Lah. Um, and we could trace all this. Uh, uh, and again, I'm telling you these stories in the, not too many details. Lah, you know. um, next time, if you have more time, I'll, I'll tell you more. Um, but it was because of my dad's uh, fear of failing, right? The paradox to this is that he ended up failing anyway. Because of the fa be because of that, uh, 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 because of that fear, you know. Um, if only he lived life not scared, you know. If only he went to take all the opportunities, you know. So, so I started out my career um, after university, right? So I, I graduated as a civil engineer. Um, uh, and so I was a civil engineer for, for, for about five years, actually. And as an engineer, right, I saw a lot of, <coughs> wow, really crazy stuff. Lah. You know, I saw the authorities, they would come to a construction site, uh, they would carry parang, and they would chase after foreign workers. I saw how the authorities would put uh, you know those, and again, maybe I think actually most of you are, are students, is it? Those of you who are here today, I just like to know, get to know you guys a bit better. Uh, on the chat, write down: Are you a student? Are you working? How many years? So and so forth. Um, so ah, okay, student. Okay, oh right, a lot of your students. How about the rest? Ah, Wei Chin. Okay, uh, you're, the, you're at the beginning of something uh, really interesting. Which in? Okay. So, so my first few years of working, right, I saw the authorities, they put gambling machines in construction sites. And, you know, I think if you guys are students and you're just working a few years, Wei you're probably a bit too young. I, I don't know. Have you seen those gambling machines in those shops where the window fronts are, like, all blackened out? You go in, right, then... There's this machine where you put in coins, you choose a horse that's going to win, yeah. and then, you know, if you win, then a bunch of coins come out. And Shashi is like shaking his head. It's like, oh, you've been there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, huh? Oh, it's still there. Okay, bloody hell. Okay, um, okay. So, so, they, so, so the authorities would confiscate those machines, put them in construction sites for the foreign workers to play. And the foreign workers, by the way, uh, uh, will play because they have no entertainment. And because they're so scared of going out, because they're scared the police will catch them. Even though they could be legal workers, right? The, uh, the, the, the authorities don't care. Man. Right? They'll catch you anyway and they'll, you know. So, so I, I saw all that happening. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's all this corruption that was happening in the, uh, in the, uh, in the industry. I, I, I saw, holy moly, under the table money here, every, there, everywhere. Um, you know, my, my boss would ask me to take uh, the, uh, some of the workers to uh, dodgy karaoke joints, you know. And, you know, dodgy karaoke joints um, doesn't mean people are singing bad songs. Dodgy karaoke joints, that means you have, um, you know, what's called GROs and, you know, you have, uh, I guess you have prostitutes there as well, lah. You know, and, you know, you have to entertain your clients and, you know, feed them lots of alcohol. So... I got really disillusioned, la. I'm like, what, what the hell is all this? You know, this, this can't be, this can't be life, la. You know, this, this can't be it. There, I'm sure Malaysia can be a better place, right? So I think by the virtue of seeing all of that, right, um, made me want to. Drove me to actually, and seeing what has happened to my family, really drove me to want to make things around me better, la. Um, or I wouldn't be happy anyway, right? And so now, imagine this, right? Imagine if I was afraid to leave. Uh, and so what happens is I would stay as an engineer. How happy do you think I'd be? I, I'm already like so disillusioned, so uh, why am I doing here? I don't want to do all this kind of shit work, you know? Um, what if I was too scared to leave? Because really, you know, you could define that as failure, right? Oh, you know, Edmund, he um, 
four years as a uh, student uh, in university studying engineering, leave engineering, do five years, and then, I, and then he leaves. I had this auntie come up to me once, you know, this really old, like, grandma. I, I was doing a talk on stage. After that, I came down, and she came up to talk to me, and she, she, and she heard my story about leaving, uh, 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 being an engineer. And she looks at me with this look and say, Oh, sire! And, you know, Shashi, that means, uh, in Cantonese, that means, wow, really wasted la, you. And she, she just couldn't brain la, because she's from that generation, right? She just cannot brain that someone could study something, do something, and then leave to do something else. Because back then, nobody actually did that. <sighs> Which that's very interesting. Yes, I had very severe Monday blues. Fridays were always the best day. No, you, you, you know something's wrong in your life, right? But Friday is the best day. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, if Friday is the best day of your week, right? Something's wrong. <laughs> something's missing. Um, and I feel that, um, I feel that that's because we're just too afraid of doing what we think is right. Right, we like if I was too afraid to leave engineering, I honestly wouldn't be here talking to you. And by the way, yeah, guys, um, being here talking to you is honestly a else because this is exactly what I want to do uh, in my life. Right, I want to inspire people uh, really to live the life that they're meant to live. I want to inspire people to be. Uh, uh, not be uh, guided by fear, but guided by, by, by principles and ideals. And here's what I want to do, you know. Um, so I want, I want to do that. And so actually being here, I was actually really looking forward to the day. And I wouldn't, if I had other things to do, honestly, I'd rather be here uh, uh, doing it. And so that's, that's the kind of life I want to, you know, inspire uh, 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 people to have. A life free of fear, a life that is, um, you know, you just, Monday is the best day. Well, okay lah, maybe Saturday, Sunday, spend with your family is nice, okay? But Monday is not a bad day. Monday is a good day. And Friday is like, oh, you're looking forward to Saturday, Sunday because it's time with your family, whatever, right? <coughs> okay, so let me rewind. Uh, I'm just going to introduce myself. And um, I did part of it already. I so. So I, I left my time as a civil engineer and I, um, I decided I was going to go into education. And you kind of, and at first I didn't know how, you know. I was like, I was, that was, what year was that? Okay, so 2001 I graduated, 2002 I got my first job. So, in, so you know how, how old I am. Uh. Um, I was a civil engineer for five years, so it was 2007. At around 2005, right, I was already getting disillusioned because, you know, of all the GROs and corruption and all the stupid authorities, you know, what the... I, I was... After a few years of that, I was like... I was so out of it. Lah. But then what? What am I going to do? Uh, all I know is to be an engineer, right? So, so... So I was actively in search for answers, and that's when I started picking up. I started picking up a lot of books, you know. Uh, it's very odd. Um, when we're searching for answers, right, the strange thing is if you're really searching for answers and you're serious about it and you keep asking the questions, right, uh, you will stumble upon the, uh, the answers or no. And so what happened was I, I picked up a lot of books. Oh, a lot, a lot of books. Like I read about a book a week. Um, uh, on, wow, well, really a lot lah about, uh, a, a lot of it is about positive thinking. Uh, I got books on uh, neuro linguistic programming. I got books on business. I read autobiographies. It's all self help stuff lah. Only recently I started going into fiction because, uh, I I'm, I'm trying to be a writer, so fiction allows me to write in a more entertaining way. So I, so I recently picked up fiction and I don't regret it. But back then, it's all self-help. Um, uh, and I read and I read and I read and I read. And, you know, when I grew up 
as a kid, right? Because I had a father that was so fearful and a mother that was depressed, right? I grew up with very, very negative thoughts in my head, you know, because my mom would be either upset at something every day or, or angry at something every day or, or sad about something every day, you know. So she, growing up, right, in such an environment, right, that, that programming it also seeps into, seeped into my mind. And so all that self-help, right, allowed me to get rid of this negative self-talk, this, like, uh, I don't know what to do, uh, and, and the books turned it into, I don't know what to do yet. And so that allowed me to search for answers. The books turned my negative thoughts about myself, my negative uh, uh, self-esteem into something a bit more positive. And so as I delved into those books, right, Two years later, I, w I remember I was, um, I was at home. <coughs> I was asking myself, how do I leave engineering? What do I do? Where do I go? And there was a book in my shelf <coughs> by uh, Dale Carnegie called How to Win Friends and Influence People. <coughs> and, you know, I remember really reading the book and I was like, oh, this book is really, you know, really awesome. You know? And so I was staring at the book and I was like, what if I work for them? Huh? And so what happened is I did a quick uh, Google search and eh, they have a uh, branch in Malaysia. And so literally I applied to them <coughs> out of the blue. Uh, I applied to them uh, and I said, I really want to work for you. And this is my, the next step uh, in, in my life. Uh, and so I got an interview with them. And th the very next thing you know, right, I was the <coughs> only person in their Malaysian operations history where they hired on the spot. On the spot, you know. It was like, when we interview and straight away, okay, okay, come work for us. You know why? So I had this, um, after reading all these books, right, I, you know, I, I went on this search for, you know, what am I going to do next? What's my future going to be? And I had this mind map, right? And, and how many of you are familiar with mind maps? Uh, say yes in the chat if you are. Uh, no, I have no idea if you don't. Um, so, Ah, great, fantastic. So uh, this mind map of what I want to be, do, and have. Uh, and, and so I've put uh, uh, my career, my future, my family, whatever, lah, right? So I actually, on an interview, right? And I'm not saying do this. It just so happens I was naive enough to do that in an interview. And so toop, this is what I want to do. I've, uh, uh, I figured it out. And this is where you belong. And so I pointed at them and into a uh, part in the mind map that says Dale Carnegie. <laughs> yeah, hired me on the spot. Uh, um, but what happened was uh, about a year into that, I realized that, hey, you know, Dale Carnegie is not actually really making the world a better place. Lah. You know, I, I want to do more. And so what happened is I, I planned to start my own training company, right? So it's a, a corporate training company, just like Dale Carnegie, they do corporate training. Uh, Dale Carnegie, they help a lot of people with building uh, their, their skills on communication, uh, building the public speaking skills. And so I wanted to start a company uh, that did corporate training as well. Um, and so I, I just sat down la, in, an ex in front of an Excel sheet, in front of a PowerPoint slide, and I just, this is what I want to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, I did all the Excel calculations on business, the cost, uh, the profit, the, 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 the projections and everything. I mean, of course, it's all, uh, it turned out to be all total bullshit. La. <laughs> but back then, I, I didn't know. Ma. <coughs> so I did all that. And next thing you know, right, one, exactly one year later, after joining Dale Carnegie, uh, I had my plans already. I had the PowerPoint slide. I had the, um, uh, I had the Excel sheets. I had all of that, right? Um, and then I met someone on the lift, on the elevator. And the guy in the elevator asked me, so uh, what do you do? And I said to him, I want to start my own corporate training business. And the guy looked at me in the lift, uh, in, the, in the elevator. Uh, and he said, huh, okay, you should meet my investor. And so, you know, how many of you are familiar with uh, elevator pitches? Like, you know, I, I, I want to see your answers. Come on, guys. Uh, uh, how many of you are familiar with the concept of elevator pitches? Ah, okay. Okay, in that case, I'll explain it. An elevator pitch is your entire business idea, right? Uh, that you can say out loud 
in the time that takes the person to get into a lift and go out, right? So if the person go to uh, ground floor, you click 10 floor, you have exactly 10 floors to tell the other guy your entire idea, right? So that's an elevator pitch. It's meant to be very, very quick, like a, a, a synopsis of what your idea is. So the, the, and it's a real concept. Right? If you Google elevator pictures, you'll find it. And so, but of course, you know, it's technically not supposed to be in an elevator. <laughs> it just so happened I did an elevator pitch in an elevator. And the guy looked at me and said, you should meet my investor. And so I did, I, I did my pitch <coughs> and we got our first funding for 100,000, you know, for a, for a business idea. And that's how I started my journey in entrepreneurship, right? I was, and the journey started because I was too stupid. I couldn't, to know I couldn't do it, which by the way is very true. I couldn't do it, right? I had not trained a single day in my life. I joined Dale Carnegie, by the way, as a salesperson, right? So I had not trained a single day in my life. I had not designed a training program ever in my life, right? But I was too stupid to know I couldn't do it. So I convinced an investor to give me money to do it. <coughs> and so herein comes my first, my, f uh, no, I mean, I've, I've failed many times, like I failed many exams before, but this is bigger than a failed exam. This is a failed business, right? So I struggle, uh, struggle, 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 struggle for three years. I barely broke even. In fact, <coughs> that 100,000 investment, I slowly over three years ran down the balance, you know. So I got a bit of business. It kind of got back up, then go back down, go back up, go back down, go back up. Next thing you know, oh, I'm in the hole for about 100,000, you know. But of course, see, because this is in the number hard, um, I, I wasn't liable for to return that money. Like it was just, you know, lost lah. Which is why I was so, uh, you know, I'm so confused on why my dad was so afraid, you know. If you run a Sindiram Berhad, right, uh, and you lose money, you're not liable for it, you know. So you don't actually lose your life savings, you don't have to beg and borrow your family, you won't actually become bankrupt if it's Sindiram Berhad. Okay, but anyway, I, I, I digress. Um, uh, so, in the whole, and I just didn't know so many things lah. I, I didn't know how to market myself. I didn't know the, the, the principles of marketing. And that's a separate program lah from today. I won't cover any of that lah. I didn't know how to market myself. I didn't know how to create good training programs. That itself is a, is a skill on its own. I didn't know that I, had to, I should specialize in a particular area in training and not do everything. Like when I did uh, Education Republic was the training company, I tried to do everything though. I tried to do public speaking, I tried to do sales, I tried to do uh, uh, power of the mind. I had a program called uh, Flush Your Stress Down the Toilet. I did all of that. No? And the problem with us trying to do everything, right, is that nobody knows us for anything. So, so we have no brand, right? We're not, <coughs> if, you, if you notice, if you go to the bookstores uh, in the self-help section, right, you notice that every specific author is known for one thing, right? Anybody is famous lah. Stephen Covey is known for seven habits, right? And that's what he does, you know. Dale Carnegie is known for their uh, uh, public speaking program. <coughs> and that's where most of their business comes from. <coughs> uh, Joseph Granny is known for his influencer training programs, a leadership training program. Nobody is known for 10 different things, right? So I didn't know that, right? I had no clue, no idea. And back then there was no startup ecosystem. Right, so no coach or mentor to tell me, hey, Edmund, you're screwing up, you know. Um, but even if they had, right, I may not have been able to register. Lah. So, so it, it, that was my, my, first, my first failure, right. And what happened is we got ourselves bought over by another company. Okay, I don't know how that happened, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> uh, we got bought over by another company. But, so the deal signed, everything, the money never came, right? And so herein lies uh, another failure, uh, money never came. Um, but around that period, right, um, now, now imagine if I had, you know, I had said, oh, uh, yeah, you know, I'm a failure, lah. oh no, you know, uh, and, you know, get all uh, depressed about it. 
Uh, thankfully, that, that didn't happen. Um, be, you know why? It doesn't matter if, it didn't matter if Education Republic failed. Because Education Republic as a training company is not the goal, you know. Education Republic was the tool, right? And, and here's, here's what I mean by that. Okay, say uh, you want to hang a picture on the wall, right? So you need to bang a nail in. Now, the hammer is the tool, right? Uh, for you to bang the nail in. Now, if a hammer is spoiled, <laughs> and you, know, you, you swing it back, and the, the head comes off, and it flies and almost kills your cat, right? Uh, what do you do? Right? You don't get uh, upset or angry or disappointed or whatever. You know, not so much. Lah. You just get another hammer. Lah. Right? That's what you do. Why? Because the hammer is not the goal. The picture on the wall is the goal. So that was the same thing with uh, Education Republic. It was, the training company was not the goal. It was the tool that I was trying to use to achieve the goal and 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 the goal really is to some and back then it was a bit blur for me but it was something like i wanted to make malaysia a better place i wasn't sure exactly how yet but i really desperately wanted to make malaysia a better place and so education republic is a tool and so if a tool breaks down or spoils right what do you do you either repair the tool or you get a new one lah right you just you're not upset about it ah yeah hammer rosa <laughs> get a new hammer lah and so that's that's exactly what happened. Um, so, so as all that shit was happening in uh, 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 in, in in Education Republic, I saw this TED video. Um, uh, how how many of you are familiar with uh, the Khan Academy? Uh, and you just put it in the chat. Um, uh, how many of you have watched it, done it, uh, seen the science videos or maths videos or whatever? Right? Yeah, Khan Academy. Come on. How many of you are familiar with it? K-H-A-N. I'm watching the chat. So I think just to ask, right? Mm. So when, when do you know that it was the time for you to stop your business? What are the signs that, uh, you know, you were aware that, okay, uh, it's time for me to leave my business? When, when the tool is broken okay. and you feel it's better to get a new tool than to fix it. Right, so so ah oh, okay, Weijin, you're not familiar with uh, kind of chemistry. So, so so what what so what happened to this? Um, I I saw this video on TED, right? <clears throat> it was Salman Khan talking about how he put thousands of videos, math and science online, free for everyone to use, and it's funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. When I saw that video, right, I oh Daniel, you're familiar with it, okay? And so when I saw that video, right, I was like, I don't know, I I got so emotional. I'm like, yeah. This is it. This is what Malaysia really needs. And so for about a year and a half, right, I took this idea and I approached everybody I could to fund the idea. No. I, I went to Bata and you know, that was very weird. I, 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 I tried to speak to Ikea, but no, nobody would lie on me. <laughs> I don't know why I went to Ikea. La, wrong place to go la, uh, for this. Um, uh, I, I went to so many different colleges and I remember this very big college, right? Um, this this I, I went to meet the head of brand marketing and branding. I won't say where it is because then you know exactly where what college it is. Um, I still remember this woman. She came in fifth, uh, half an hour late, um, and it's like you know those you know those cowboy movies where they burst in like and then they hang. So she was kind of like that, no? Uh, she so she burst through the door, vroom, and then like like whipping out her guns at me, right? She was like, "What do you want?" Hey, I'm like, hey, hello. <laughs> In my head, I was like, uh, I have an appointment with you. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I got so much of that, right? A year and a half, I couldn't find funding. Uh, when finally, uh, what happened was, um, I, I, after a year and a half, uh, two things happened. Um, one is, people started taking me seriously. Yeah? Because... Earlier on, when the idea first surfaced to to create a free, uh, basically a free, you know, tuition resource for all Malaysian students, right? Uh, people wouldn't take me seriously. Why? I have no track record, lah. You know what? 
I don't have a successful business. Um, the training company is not doing well. Um, I'm barely surviving. Uh, what's this? Uh, <laughs> and back then, I looked a lot younger. Uh, and, and I tell you, age takes, age does make people take you seriously even sometimes. Um, so this, who is this young fart? Uh, what is he talking about? What? Education, whatever. He doesn't know what he's doing. It's just an idea. And really, back then, it was just an idea. But after a year and a half, right, uh, people started taking me seriously, yeah, because I never gave up. Oh. I'm still at it, no. After a year and a half, no, I still, I'm still. You know, my my head is a bit bruised, lah, because I keep banging on the same brick wall, lah. You know? <laughs> but you know, a year and a half later, uh, people finally took me seriously. Uh, that's one. Uh, two is my my pitch changed uh, somewhat. And I decided to focus exclusively on trying to sell the idea to uh, to colleges. So so here's my pitch to colleges uh, that made this work, right? Um, I told them, now why spend half a million on the billboard? And you know, there's so many billboards in all these colleges, right? Some of them cost half a million dollars, you know, ring it. Uh, a year, you know. And I'm telling them, uh, wait, you no, know, spend spending your money on that. Spend your money on us, right? And what we do, is we make a real difference and help you to create an emotional attachment to the people who's going to join your college. So, he, so here's the pitch. A kid wants to join a college, he's form five, right? Would he join a college that has helped him for 11 years, right? Help him get A's, help the parents be happy with him, have him do well in school, get notoriety, win awards. Would this person join a college that has for 11 years, then one to form five, been helping him? Or will he join a college that has never done anything for him before? Never helped him a single day in his life, right? So if everything else equal, right, who would they join? And so uh, that's how I got uh, my investment from this, uh, from, from Brickfields Asia College uh, uh, back then. Uh, the founder just saw it and is like, okay. So, and they, they funded us, uh, from the time I, I started it to the time I left, I started in 2012, I left in 2017, uh, they funded us more than 10 million already by then, right? And we made 6,000 videos. <laughs> and Shashi, just now before the session started, you mentioned that you actually used the videos and yeah, yeah, yeah. you mentioned it was really helpful to you. Yeah. And I'm sure Shashi is not just being nice, like, <laughs> it actually helped a bit. Lah. Um, yeah. So 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 yeah, we made six thousand videos, and at the and before I left, um, we had uh, close to one hundred sixty thousand students actually watching the videos. Um, but only in October lah. January nobody watches our videos. <laughs> like goes on. <laughs> in in October, right before exams, right? there are one hundred sixty thousand people watch. So 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 uh, over six years, we made six thousand videos on all core subjects. Uh, you know, people can still uh, go to uh, Brickfield Social College, uh, go to their uh, web platforms and access all these resources for them for, for free, right? Um, and so, if I was, and so here's the thing. So, I could do EduNation, right, which is a free tuition platform. I could do EduNation because, hey, I just got a different hammer lah. You know, I wanted to somehow make Malaysia a better place. It wasn't so clear to me exactly how back then. Um, when the idea for, uh, uh, so Education Republic is me trying to just help people, lah, right? Um, EduNation was the effort to change Malaysia's education system, right? To, to empower students to take charge of their own learning. Um, uh, and, then, and then, you know, uh, not so good things happened, lah. Um, and herein lies my second failure I want to share with you guys. Um, so, so I was still screwing up in EduNation because there's just a lot of things we didn't, we didn't do right. Uh, and so what happened was in around 2016, uh, 17, I don't exactly remember when, what happened is I just got married, right? And I went for my honeymoon. And right during my honeymoon, right, the uh, board cancelled one of my projects, you know. So I was running a pilot program. What project is this? I was running a pilot program 
And the idea was free tuition in every public school in Malaysia. You're like, huh? How do you do that? Because I'm sure it will cost a lot of money if you, if you put a tuition teachers in every public school in Malaysia. No, so what you do is you get students to help each other. So we did this pilot program where all these Form 3 students, right, about 50 of them in two schools, they, they were, by the way, almost all of them were failing maths. Uh, and not, not, not at maths, this is Form 3, you know, this is basic maths, you know. <laughs> and so these guys were on average, lah, take 50 of them, you average their scores, it's about 35. Majority of them are failing their maths, right? So we did this for pilot program for seven months where basically they just meet back, meet after school and help each other, no teacher involved, uh, Help, they, they just teach each other, help each other. And the result was, seven months later, right, their scores went up from 35 to about 70 plus. So from majority fail to a big child and getting A, you know. So that's crazy. And the, and, and, and the concept was this. If, if 50 students, right, were to take one exam paper, and I don't mean one exam paper for each student, uh, I mean 50 of them take one exam paper, what score do you think they'll get? And really, you know, these students will know this topic, that student will know that topic, that student will know that topic. And next thing you know, it's an A, right? If they take just one paper. So that project was cancelled uh, without talking to, to, to me. Uh. And so, holy shit. How? Uh? Hammer broken. Uh. Right? And so... I, I had the choice. One is I either fix it or I get a new hammer. Lah. Right? So, and I thought it was just easier to try to get a new hammer. Lah. Right? And so I left. I left uh, and um, I passed on everything. Actually, around that period also, it just so happens, right, that I was already doing nothing much. Ah. In fact, most of the work in EduNation was already done by the team the current COO, the team. So I was like, you know, so, so I was focusing my time on trying to push the boundaries of what's possible in education. And that's why the pilot programs and things like that. So now that the pilot program is cancelled, right? And I'm not confident that, you know, I could do any, anything that's pushing the boundaries. It's time to go lah. Right? I mean, if, I st if I'm fearful, and by the way, I could have stayed ah. I could have stayed, uh, uh, taken a salary, and all of that, led a comfortable life. But, but no, uh, I, had, I had something to, I had something unfinished. Uh, and so I tried to start a school. Uh, and the school was going to be amazing. It would have no subjects. So students, they come to school, right? They're not one hour do maths, one hour do science, one hour do history. No. Every day, they come to school and they'll solve real-world problems. So I'll give you an example. Okay, so your project, uh, this, uh, uh, this, um, this month, whatever, is to figure out how to clean the river in front of our school, right? And that, that project-based kind of learning, right? Clean river, okay. So to clean river, you need to learn so many things, right? You need to learn math, right? Because you need to calculate the size of the river, how much water going through, uh, if you're going to filter it, how much filtration capacity you need, blah, blah, blah. You need to learn biology because, well, obviously, you know, it's the river's not clean if there's uh, E. coli in it, lah, right? So you need to learn biology. You need to learn history because you need, to, you need to, do, to, to learn about what other people did in the past before. So you need to learn from their uh, uh, victories and mistakes. Um, so, so, so you learn all these different, and of course, geography and... So just by coming to school to do projects and to continuously do it for all the years you're a student, right? What happens is a student, when they get a problem in life, right, will not be asking, I don't know what to do or, or I don't know how to solve this. A student who's solving problems every day when presented with a problem will be able to know Here's what I need to do. First, second, third, fourth. Here are the people I need to, here's the team I need to assemble. Here's the mentors I need to get. Uh, here's the first step I need to do, which is maybe some research. Then I need to create a project out of this and I need to hold everyone accountable, right? Because that's what projects are, right? It's, it's doing all these things. 
I imagine doing that all their life. So that was the school I was going to start. It was going to be called Kita. Uh, um, and so we were in wow, this long discussion. Um, <coughs> we got a minor investor <coughs> uh, who came in and he pledged about he pledged a million, right? And we used that momentum to get a major investor who was going to pledge almost six million. Uh, and of course, I won't say who, I won't say what, because this deal didn't happen. The, uh, the investors had a disagreement, the minor investor and the major investor, and negotiations went on for eight months. Uh. And so for eight months, me and another partner, right, we basically didn't take in any contracts, right? We didn't take in any work. We didn't take in any job because we thought, hey, next month, we'll be busy starting the school already. So for eight months, uh, uh, you know, a bunch of us basically didn't have any income. And so by the end of it, uh, because of investor infighting, didn't happen. Uh, you know, um, and, and we had to abandon the idea because everybody tired already. Uh, and so that was my, uh, my, my third failure. But what happened from there was really interesting. Um, right after that, I had to reinvent myself. Like, what do I do now, right? Uh, what's next? Like, how, right? Um, and so I, I monetized what I did uh, for fun <laughs> for the longest time. And so, you know, since I started uh, uh, EduNation in 2012, right? I was already mentoring social enterprises. I was already, you know, in, in this is place called Magic. Uh, it, I don't think it exists anymore. Um, it's some other name now. But, you know, I, I went there, I mentored social enterprises, I mentored uh, social entrepreneurs. <coughs> and what happened to us, I, I started mentoring uh, purpose-driven businesses, uh, social enterprises. And as I was doing that, right, I had to get very good at something. I had to get very good at helping very small purpose-driven businesses to build cash flow. And so I delved into Facebook marketing, I delved into uh, uh, Google uh, uh, marketing, I delved into how to hack and growth, I delved into you know, how to generate cash flow, I delved to B2B and B2C sales. And by the way, I got customers, <coughs> uh, what, what I, so I got customers who then wanted to do something, and then I learned something new, and then, you know, I, anyway. Um, so me leaving the school project brought me down a totally different path. And the interesting thing is, right, now, uh, because I went down that path into learning about marketing and sales, B2B, B2C, I am so much more equipped to take any other business we take. Uh, uh, like right now, I'm running a, another business called Small Potato. Uh, the new version just launched, so right now we're searching for sellers to help. And so we're so much better uh, equipped to be able to uh, build a new business because we have all these skills on sales and marketing. Um, so yeah, um, so <coughs> the interesting thing is failure has been good la, to me. Failure has allowed me to learn much, 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 much more than if I had been afraid to fail. Failure gave me everything I knew. It has allowed me to, I think, live many lifetimes la, of knowledge. Um, I've done so many different things. And because of that, I think whatever we decide, me and my wife, la, we decide to do in our lives, right? I think we're much more able to actually make that work. Um, so yeah, so that's the, you know, so guys, if you're afraid to fail, um, guess what, you're gonna fail anyway. I mean, you really are. Failure is not, it's not, by the way, failure is not an optional thing. Uh. You're gonna fail. The question is, what, are, what would that failure mean to you? What are you going to use that failure for? Like, uh, Will failure mean that you're useless, stupid? Or will failure mean that, you know, hey, you know, I learned something new from this, you know, let's, let's do something else. Yeah. So, 
that was that was really a wonderful story and experience uh, I've learned. So yeah, thank you so much for your insights. And, and, and yeah. I just want to add one more thing, uh, guys. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it's the funny thing, uh, if you know, even though, and by the way, some sometimes things are stressful, uh, especially when you're failing, like like when you don't have you don't have enough revenue, for example. When I was in Education Republic, especially. Not enough money, not enough revenue. What do you do? How are you going to feed yourself? How are you going to pay your staff? <clears throat> it's very stressful, huh? But the funny thing is, right, you can bear, I, I could bear the stress, you know, because I knew that this was exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And along with that knowledge, right, comes this strange inner peace, you know, that I tell you was was totally absent when I was uh, when I was an engineer working for uh, these corrupt organizations. So as an entrepreneur, right, even though everything around me was falling apart, right, I had inner peace. You know, it's very strange. <clears throat> and this inner peace, it it continued lah. You know, um, and I've ever since then, when I decided that I wasn't going to live in fear. And instead, I would live with hope that, wow, I mean, it's just inner peace. Like, I don't know how else to describe it to you guys. Yeah. So I hope everybody feel inspired and uh, motivated uh, to, to fail more, like, so that they can learn as much as they can uh, before they move on to the next phase, uh, especially when they start to leave a business behind to start a better off, like, for something new, better in their life. If so, you fail your exam next month, uh, I'm not to blame, yeah? Okay. <laughs> this is the context <laughs> of entrepreneurship. <laughs> so, yeah. So, if you're interested to know more about a Small Potato, the business that Edmund is running, uh, please visit uh, the, their social media pages as well, uh, as you can see on the screen right now. So, uh, if you've enjoyed this session and would like to give us some feedback, comments to improve our next Talk It Talks, Please participate in a quick poll which appears on your screen right now. So, with I appreciate your. Shashi, is there is there time to get uh, people's questions as well? We have that Q and A after this, right? Uh, yeah, but unfortunately, I think we are running short of time because we're supposed to start at nine pm. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, but yeah, if they have any questions, I'd be more than happy to compile them and then send them to you later. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. So, yeah. So, please participate in a quick poll which appears on your screen. We highly appreciate your effort to fill in the polls. And before we end this session, I would like to share about RISE's uh, latest program uh, where you can participate. So, currently we have um, RISE Online. So, RISE Online 22 is a free online course that equips you with the basics of entrepreneurship. You can learn at your own timing and stand a chance to win up to RM 2500 by submitting a business pitch. So sign up for Rice Online 22 via bit.ly slash Rice Online 2022. So in addition, there is Kecil Kecil Chili Party competition. So Kecil Kecil Chili Party is a competition hosted by Rice for Malaysian youths to tell stories about employability through comics. So you can win up to RM 3000 ringgit in cash prize. So for more information on how to participate in this competition, visit bit.ly slash kecil kecil chili party. So last but not least, we have upcoming Rise With Us session on communicating effectively. So if you're someone who's looking forward to sharpen your communication skills and manage your anxiety while communicating, then this is definitely the session that you should sign up. So register for this session at bit.ly slash rise with us. So if you would like to learn more about upcoming Talkie Talk sessions, like and follow us at Talkie Talks on Facebook and Instagram. To find out more about RISE and our upcoming programs, like and follow us on our social media accounts. So thank you for everyone coming and see you next time, Edmund. And all the best with your business and current endeavors. All right. Send your questions to Shashi. Yeah. See you guys. Yes. Jungle.